Hello everybody. I'm going to be recording a little working process of me filling out this tile set for you guys. And uh, let me know if my mic is working properly. Let me type that in just in case. Because this is only the second time that I've ever streamed directly to YouTube, so I'm a little bit new to it. But uh, assuming everything goes okay, then this will be a way for me to lecture to you guys and then also have a recording that you guys can refer back to if you want to. Okay, I can see chat over there in the side window, so I should be able to respond to that in somewhat of a timely manner, but it is a little bit delayed. So if you ask a question, I'll go back and look occasionally to see if I have to answer any questions for you guys. So just to start off with, um, I am going to be doing the tile set as this template kind of represents here in the file that I gave you guys. You can hear me great. Um, I'm just going to be filling out these tiles with just kind of a pattern that I think is going to be pleasing. I, my idea for the tile set and uh, background is it's going to be just kind of like a spooky forest or something like that. Um, and in case you didn't quite understand what these tiles are supposed to be, each one of these squares, right, is a single tile and the colors represent like the top, sides, bottoms, etc., and then the solid fill. So this is gonna be a corner piece right here. Uh, then I've got a top piece and a left corner piece and a left side, right side, center, bottom pieces. This would be a single thickness one because it's got both a bottom and a top to it at the same time. And then over here, a single thickness column one floating completely by itself. And then these are just the interior corners where you just have to fill in what happens when you turn a sharp corner on the inside as well. But all the colors should represent that stuff. Um, I've got that on layer one, which I'll probably turn off before I export it on layer two. I've got just a few solid colors that I filled in, as well as all of this patterning that I did previously to just kind of make like rocks or cobblestones or something like that, um, just to kind of fill in the details. I do want to go over the setup of the document just real fast because it could be um, a little confusing to set this up for proper tiling. If we go to the preferences menu, we can see we've got miscellaneous grid and tile mode, and I've got grid enabled, but by default, the grid spacing is so small that you can't see it until you zoom in and it's really obnoxious. So the grid spacing here turned up to your tile size, whatever that is, minor 32. And then you can pick the color down here, like bright yellow would probably be fine, blue is probably fine. Um, and then the grid size, you can also make it bolder if you want to, but I usually just don't. So that's for this document. And you can see when I zoom completely out, um, the grid starts over here in the very top corner. So I've got some blank tiles and then some other tiles that you can actually see. So that will help with uh, working on your actual tile set. Then what I had done before, I tried to um, have a second Piscal file open. You can just hit Create Sprite in the upper right-hand corner. And this one was specifically for um, tiling so that I could have in Preferences Tile Mode enabled so that you could see all the duplicate copies of the other tiles. Um, weird thing that I found is that if I select this tile that I've worked on and I copy it and I go to my large document and hit Paste, it works. So there it is, it pops up in this corner. And now I could grab it with the selection tool and then cut, move, and paste like that. So that's fine. But if I tried to grab, let's say, this center tile here, because I want to put it in my other document to see how it would tile with itself, copy, come over here, paste, it doesn't work and I don't know why. So I guess if you want to make your first tile attempt in a smaller document like this, you can do it, but it has to be done in a vacuum away from the tile set and that's kind of annoying. So instead what I would do is just copy and then move and paste somewhere where there isn't already something in the way. So let's just go like here, paste. I'm gonna get rid of all of this stuff by just highlighting it and deleting. And then I'll grab this and we'll do copy and you can see I can paste, paste like that. And so this will give me at least some idea of how this would tile with itself, but really it's not ideal. So I'm not really sure what's going on, why it only goes one direction, but that's something that you can do. 
So what I'm going to start out with then is just trying to fill in these same kinds of um, stone details uh, here. And we can imagine like how the tile set might come together that we're turning a corner here, but there's actually a little hole here. And then we end up hitting a single thickness column. That means that the details that are going across this span here from the top tile to the bottom have to hook up not just with this wall right here, but potentially with this wall over here. They should be at least the same on the border. That's the idea. So if I start by selecting like half of this tile like that and copying it and then moving this over and pasting it in place like that. So that'll give me a place to start with because I at least know that it's going to hook up with the two corner pieces top and bottom here if I don't mess with these little detail lumps, these, these stones that I've got. But it would be nice if it wasn't exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is uh, get rid of some of these details here. So I'm just going to fill these in. Actually, I could just use bucket. Just like that. Just use my bucket and get rid of those. I'm leaving those top two because I want them to connect. And then I'll just draw new stone shapes slightly differently and try not to pay too much attention to what I did before. Otherwise, I'll kind of obsess over making them really different. Uh, you can make my second color purple, or I can make my second color transparency if I'm working right on the edge. Uh, but I'm just going to try to shape a few new stones here. So hopefully it looks a little bit more unique. We'll put one right there. It's OK if they've got the same silhouette. I don't really care about that. Oop, I get my transparency back. And so that way I'll get a nice unique look, but I'll have the benefit of tiling. So I'm trying to make these a little bit uh, organic and kind of lumpy because they're just stones. I'm not sure how close I'm getting to the other set of stones, but it really doesn't matter if it's somewhat similar because stones are stones. They don't need to be completely unique. Now I am going to have to fill on the other side over here, so I don't want to go too far past the center line. Uh, because this is a single thickness column. So we'll just stop there. Maybe I'll put one here. Maybe I won't. Uh, and now I'm going to go over to the other side. And I'm going to copy this side. I won't even go all the way across. I'll just go right there. Copy that. Paste. Whoops, I didn't move. There, i got to move this, then paste. A little bit strange how that works. There we go. And so now... This one, at least, oh, I didn't quite place that correctly, I don't think. Let me try one more time. Yeah, it goes right up to the edge here. Okay, so one more. Copy, move, make sure that's okay now. Paste. There we go, that's correct. All right, so now I know at least the top and the bottom will line up with their duplicates, and so I can paint out some of these rocks. Bucket, the ones that I definitely want to replace. Uh, I can't bucket that one because it's connected. There we go. Just do that. And now I can fill in new rock shapes however I want to. Get a nice, unique look. Remember that when you're going to repeat tiles, if you do anything that's too unique uh, looking, then it's going to really stand out. And that could be bad because tiling and repeatable assets need to kind of be um, sort of like a wallpaper pattern where you can't exactly tell where it starts and ends the pattern necessarily, but you can tell that it is a pattern. So be cautious about being too um, I don't know, too unique and, and flashy with whatever it is you're making because it could end up making it look too obvious. And you won't really know what the, the balance is between those two until you've got some experience. So just do your best. Okay. So I'm going to try something like that. I'll put one or two smaller rocks on this side too, kind of like that. 
got, oh, actually, okay, so I saw that I have two small ones up here. I don't want them directly across, so I'll move one down, and I'll put another one way over there, for instance. Okay, so that's probably going to be okay. So now I would want to test this to see if that's going to tile nicely with itself. So I'm going to select, actually, first I'll just delete all this. I'm pretty sure it would have looked fine, but I'll just delete all that. I'm going to select this tile that I just made since I can't use my other file for some reason. Copy, move over, and then paste one, two, three times. So now we can get an idea of how it stacks up on top of itself. Um, taking a look at that, seems all right. The only thing that really stands out to me are these two larger dots towards the center. They look a little bit conspicuous to me, like I can notice that they're there a little bit too easily. So I'm gonna paint one of them out and then I think I'll put a second one like right up here. And now I'll copy paste that again and see if that looks a little bit better. I'm trying to stagger those internal details a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. To me, that looks a little bit better than it did before. And so I'm going to stick with that pattern. Um, what you might notice is that I'm working all just with flat colors because it's the fastest way to get patterns set down. There's no shading currently. There's no dithering patterns or anything like that because that should be the next step. First, I want to make sure that I've got the, these patterns nicely established so that my pixel art looks neat and tidy and, and nice. Actually, here's one little part I want to change. That just looked a little bit strange with the corner attached like that. Um, and then I'll worry about detailing it second. And the only place where I'll have to be careful is on the borders. If I've got some shading pattern, I just want it to carry straight across and make sure that it lines up on both the single column variants and the um, large area variants. I could try to show you, let's see what would happen if we turned a corner with this. So I'm going to get rid of this one and I'll copy this one instead like that. So if I, and then it would be like this one, which I haven't filled out at all down here. We'll copy and paste it here. So if we turned a corner, you can see that this would be a single column, this would be a corner, that would be a single column. What we'd actually need is a special uh, corner piece, which is more like this. Turning a corner in here, and then having the external corner out here. Um, I think that's what these were intended to be. I don't quite remember. Uh, they may have been that everything else was solid, but we were just barely turning a corner, and that this was empty, and these three were filled. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to really worry about this one down here. If you start constructing your um, tile map, and you find that you need extra pieces, go ahead and add them to this sheet. Um, as you go, you're probably going to find that you will need a few extra little pieces here and there that aren't provided by this template, especially in very complicated cases. But you should be able to get quite far with just this basic set of tiles. Okay? If you guys have questions as I go, be sure to type them into chat because that's the only way I will be able to answer them. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to go on my merry way working along through this demo. Okay, uh, I'm going to fill the top and bottoms here. I don't actually have to copy anything because these are completely unique. I can just fill them in with the uh, pencil tool. And so I'm going to make sure that that bordering stone has a completed shape. This one too could even go a little bit farther like that. And then just fill in rocks wherever I see fit. Uh, the only thing I want to be aware of is that in tile sets in pixel art, typically you're going to have colliders that represent where the ground level is. And I want to try to get close at least to the top, if not even just hit it with a few rocks so that our collider could potentially just be completely solid. We're not actually going to take these into a game engine probably, but it's nice to know what that working process is like. Or who knows, if the, the whole quarantine thing uh, goes on long enough, maybe I will show you guys some basic Unity 
and how to bring these things in and decorate a small game level. Um, you'll have to tell me what you would prefer because I don't want this to be boring and I don't want this to just be pixel art for the duration of the class. But I'm gonna fill up this tile set to try to get close to those edges so that we have um, what would appear to be like a nice solid collider if this was one solid block. Um, typically you wanna have a collider just for each block and then these are empty. It makes it a lot simpler and it's a lot more like retro uh, games. Although nowadays we have the ability to make our colliders any shape we want, even cutting a tile in half or at an angle or something like that. It's pretty easy to do as well, especially in uh, Unity, which is the game engine that I prefer to use. Uh, but I'm sure in other game engines you can do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna fill up this. I keep having to switch my uh, secondary color because I'm right near the edge of this. Um, I'm doing that by holding down Alt and right clicking. That will replace that second color there so I could uh, get rid of certain bits of the silhouette and then if I Alt right click again I can get the other color back again. So I'm just going to fill this up a little bit. It's okay if I've got some gaps like that because this is the end cap. And then put a few other odd looking rocks on the inside. Patterns are pretty important with pixel art that you um, try to establish what is clearly inside and outside. So I've got a very dark color for the inside of this dirt. Uh, and that means that the sky or background in my uh, eventual scene will have to be something that contrasts that a little bit so that we can see um, the difference between what we would walk on and what we can walk through. I'm thinking something misty, uh, like a misty kind of forest or something would be good because that means I could have desaturated colors and less contrast. And that would be nice to show a higher contrast character on top of. We'll probably move forward with this after you guys make a little environment by just doing one more assignment where we make a um, small animated character because I think that would be fun. Uh, and I'm going to do a demo for that as well because I do love animation and pixel animation is really fun. So just zooming back out again, periodically you want to do this. Do some work, zoom back out, see if you are maintaining your pattern. I can see that I did not include enough rocks near the top here, um, which I didn't notice until I zoomed out. And I'm actually going to leave a little small gap there and do a rock right here and then maybe another slightly smaller rock right there. And now I like how, how kind of randomized that looks, but it satisfyingly caps off that column. Uh, I'll do the same thing down here. Now, I had faded out these rocks to smaller and smaller and then let them disappear. And I tried to do that intentionally so that I could have like what looks like a more natural earth down here and maybe a cobblestone kind of surface, constructed surface across the top. And so I'm going to do the same thing with my single column. I don't really know why I did that, um, just that if you come up with some sort of rules for your fiction or for your um, art that you should try to be consistent with them. Uh, I just thought it would look neat to have kind of a difference between the tops and bottoms of things. And I may come back and add like little stalactites or um, bits of, of uh, plant life or something kind of extending off of this and make this less substantial on the bottom. I'm not really sure, but uh, since that's what I did, I'm going to transition to smaller stones as we move down. I'll put one last big one here and maybe increase the gap size a little bit to drive home the idea that these are less solid. I'm taking a look over here just to kind of get my bearings, do a couple of larger stones like this. Do an oblong one maybe. And then by this point we're pretty much done with the stones. Oops, there we go. So I'll do the same thing over here. I periodically look to the opposite side of the uh, composition to see what kind of rocks I have because I don't want to put one at exactly the same height over and over and over again like a ladder like this. I would prefer to stagger them a little bit and have them a bit more randomized so that you don't just perceive a mechanical kind of uh, pattern in uh, what I'm doing. 
That said, it can be a little bit difficult. So don't beat yourself up over it if you can't get perfect patterns or something. I'll put uh, maybe a tiny one here, medium sized one there. Put one over here as well. Maybe a smaller one right there. And I'll take a look at it in just a second. Let's put one there. A couple small pebbles. Let's see how we did. Uh, not too bad. Uh, might be too many over on this side. Let me shave one of these down a little. Just reduce the size of this one. Maybe put a smaller, a bigger gap between the two. Um, do, 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 do. And I don't really know. Just kind of messing with it, seeing what looks good. I'll get rid of a little bit of the dirt here. Yeah, that's probably all right. Okay. I feel like I need maybe one more little dot, like right there. Cool. So I've got a vertical column that could tile with itself as far as it wants to. I've got an area that I could use to fill in some platforms. Uh, I'll do this one as quick as I can and this one and then I'll try to build a small platform area and see how far we get because I want to do the full composition like the background as well. So for this one just to kind of cheat it along and, and start off quickly I'm just going to grab the top half of all of these copy and move this down and paste. This would have the negative effect of, for one, it's going to change the entire silhouette of this, this block that I set up in dirt, which means that it's less unique. And also, when we look at blocks side by side, they're not going to look as special. So I should at least, if I'm going to do something like that, come in and move things around a little. So like shave down a rock or two, and maybe let's fill in several of them Whoops, with uh, background. Well, fill that one in, it's completely gone. I'm going to try to leave the borders alone, though, remember, because we want that to attach even to the other duplicates up there. So let's fill in a bunch, especially the little ones. There's no reason they should be the same like that. And now I'm going to come in with background and rock colors and just try to make it more unique than it was before. Let me try to change the silhouette a little bit. Make up for the fact that I pasted so much stuff. Not sure how far out I should extend that, really. Do something like that, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rock here. And then since the bottoms are all um, less substantial, all across the bottom we'll have like little speckles and things, but we won't have any densely filled in rocks like that. The theming of your tile map is completely up to you. I don't really care what you pick. Just try to make it interesting looking and uh, attractive, as attractive as you can. Uh, you could do something more metropolitan like uh, asphalt and concrete and things like that if you really wanted to. Uh, but you're going to have to try to, you know, sell that idea with colors and, and contrast and such like that. So whatever you pick, you know, think about it carefully. Try to make sure that the colors are going to work for you, that you like what you're working on because you have to stare at it quite a bit. And it could uh, be kind of torturous if you're not happy with it initially. There. Put a larger one underneath. And over here, I don't remember how much I changed. I think I didn't change enough over here. Let me fill in those two. And uh, I'll do one big one in the middle because I saw there were two on each side. Maybe this one, a really big one. And then a smaller one here. It's okay if they touch a little bit. Shading should break that up, but uh, 
even if it doesn't, it's like it's not as if rocks couldn't just be right next to each other. Okay. Do a very small one right there. That's a little bit too regular. Let's do this. Okay, that's gonna be fine. Larger one. And then a few on the sides. Pixel art is very easy to edit after the fact, so you don't have to be precious when you're putting down your first few um, shapes or colors. Just get something on the canvas so that you can mess with it. Um, changing a few pixels here or there is very, very easy to do, very fast. And usually you can't tell what looks good until you zoom out anyway. So you want to put down some initial shapes, zoom out, take a look at it, find some area that you want to work with, zoom back in, and then start doing your extra bits of editing. So I'm going to add a few more interior blocks here, kind of pepper them around to give this a little bit more life. Keep in mind that when things are tiling, I want the patterns to be a bit pleasing and not super obvious. So I could test these if I wanted to. Um, in this case, I think I'll probably just move on so that we get through our demonstration, but that'll be fine for that one. And then this last one right here doesn't have to connect with anything at all, and so I can just randomly fill in some shapes however I want I'm not sure if you guys can hear it on the microphone but someone is mowing their lawn down the street it seems to me no matter what day I pick every day of the week someone is noisily mowing their lawn the downside of living in a suburb. It never was annoying to me until I had to have a microphone running. And then suddenly, I'm annoyed by it every single time I hear it. Or it could just be the fact that I've been shut indoors for a couple of weeks now with my three-year-old that I'm just more annoyable in general. I would not be surprised. I hope all you guys are doing fine with the, uh, the quarantine, staying indoors, staying away from big groups of people, help us all get through this as quick as possible. I know it's probably pretty tough to get uh, shut away like this so suddenly, but we're doing the right thing. Make sure that uh, we don't have a bigger health crisis than we already have. And at least we have art to keep us company, don't we? Okay, so I'll just, uh, eh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with the single one. I see here like I indicated some sort of like roots or something at the bottom of this one, which is kind of interesting. I'm gonna just really quickly come through and like rough up the bottom of each of these um, a little bit and put some, some shapes here, especially on the ends where um, they're not gonna repeat too many times. Kind of nice, there we go. Define, fine. Uh, not jumping off the walls and killing family members is how I would define fine. If you're not doing those things, you're doing fine. If you're a little bit stir crazy, that's pretty normal. So just roughing this up to make it a little bit more interesting looking as if like dirt was clinging to um, sticks or debris or roots or something like that. I'm going to do that for each of these just because it's kind of nicer to look at if I do that. Maybe not do it everywhere. And I may come in here later with like different colors to uh, give like these roots some actual um, definition, but it wouldn't be required or anything. Well, I'm glad you're at least half fine. 
better than not at all. Okay, so that's good. And uh, yeah, what the heck? Let's do this one too, since I'm on a roll here. Give me something to criticize when I get into the larger tiles. Okay, cool. All right, so I've got my various sets here and now I want to try to apply them to a game space. So I'm probably gonna need a new Pisco file. This one hasn't really done me any favors at all, so I'm just gonna close that one entirely. Uh, I should save this first just to be cautious before I move on though. So I've been saving as Pisco files, which just downloads directly to my download folder. Um, but you could also export if you wanted to. Exporting um, this one right here, so PNG, and scale of one, if you want it to remain pixel art, would be the important thing. And if you download this one, it does the same thing. It'll just throw a PNG image into your download folder. And now you can open that anywhere, Photoshop, a different pixel editor, whatever. So one of each is the safest option, but really you only need one of the two. Uh, I'm gonna create a new sprite. And so this one now is just a 32, 32 pixel um, document, so a single tile. And since I want to try to fill up an environment, I'm going to try to estimate uh, how big should this be. The size of this document is actually pretty good because each of these is 32, and I think I did 10 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, so 320 by 320 is what that would be, and it's really easy to imagine. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. 320 by 320 resize. And then my grid is still on, but if it wasn't, then I could enable it here and set it to 32. So I can treat this kind of like a tile editor. Now I hope that I can copy paste between the two since I had trouble with that earlier. If not, then since I just saved a PNG and a Pisco file, I could open this um, in a separate instance of Pisco, or I could import this basic platforms to PNG. Let's see if I can copy paste though, because that would be the most convenient. I'm gonna grab all of these nine, all together, copy, paste. Yeah, you know what I think? I think that because that other document was a single tile, I was only seeing this tile in the upper left or wherever it anchors from. So when I would paste, it was like pasting off the canvas or something like that. So that's nice, I got this tile. Um, let's try to shape something just with these, and then if I need to swap them for a different tile, I will. So I'm gonna start, hmm, you know what I'll do? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put like a little, um, little blob everywhere where I want to have solid ground, just to start off with. I'm gonna say, so two above the baseline right here, and then I'm gonna have it drop off, and all of these ones will be filled as well. So all of that'll be solid. I'll make a gap and maybe fill that in with either like a void that you would drop down and die or like some water or something. And I'll keep the platform going on the opposite side here. So this will be all solid. Then I'm going to have a floating platform or two as well. Um, I'm going to keep in mind that we're going to put a character in here. I'll probably have him stand like here and he'll be at least like two pixels or two, sorry, tiles tall with maybe a tile of headroom so that he's not just whacking his head on something. So then up here, let's see, what could I do? I could have a tile coming in from off screen, uh, extending across here like that. And I could make, I'll make that one one tile wide. And now my palette is gonna get in the way. So let me move that. Uh, if you cut, move, then it'll allow you to paste. I'll put it right here because I don't intend to put any other tiles in this gap area. So then I'll paste control V and I'll keep drawing this. So let's have from over here, like a little stair step. Let's get rid of that part. And then this one, I'll let it go like two up and then back in. So this whole area, I'll try to fill in with tiles. And then I think that's fine. That'll, that'll at least fill up my space a bit. So let's see, what would I use? So I need a uh, corner tile here and here, so I can grab that. 
And actually, each one of them has a um, side tile right under it. So I'm going to copy both of those, move the selection, and then paste when I'm lined up. There we go. Paste. Okay. And keep the, keeping that selection, I'm going to move again and paste. I hope it doesn't cut off the uh, tiles there. I hope it won't. Nope, it left them alone. i got to be careful about how I select, though. Then I've got um, flat area on the top, which is just this single one. I can actually grab the, once you make a selection, if you don't copy it, you can move it a little bit. So I just corrected my mistake there. So I can grab this uh, void as well, because in each case, it looks like it's going to have that blank solid underneath it. So paste, paste, paste all across here. Oh, come on. Can't quite tell. I should probably zoom in. There we go. Couldn't quite tell if that was lined up or not. Slide this over and paste. Okay, so that's fine. Then up here. And if you know you're going to have a long area, you could paste several times and then copy the three of them together or the four of them or something. And that can speed this up. So there we go. I've got two solid areas. So now I need the lower. Uh, corner and middle, copy, move, paste. Same thing here. And then this is that interior angle. I can, yeah, okay, so I can kind of see why I might need it because this root area on the bottom just doesn't have any rocks at all. And then this one has dense rocks and so I would have to do something to kind of indicate that turn, or maybe have a second one of these. Um, we'll see. But at least this part here, I could just bucket in um, the solid color. I guess I could, ooh, okay, not that. <laughs> There's one little pixel gap there that got in my way. So I could fill this in at least mostly like that, and then just you can see that I need to do something in that tile space there. So we've got that filled in. Um, hmm. Just to make it interesting. So what if I what if I got rid of this this one entirely? So if I removed this, I can see I went one too high. Delete, delete. So that would make both of these like an end cap, like a single end cap. And this one would still be a wall. I think it would just, well, and then this one, yeah. I think it would work out fine. I guess I'll leave that. I wanted to see, can I make shapes that are a little challenging and that I didn't provide for? Um, the answer is probably, but it's gonna slow this down. Uh, I'm gonna just grab all four of these, copy, and paste. And now I think everywhere on the screen is every one of these tiles except for the bottom left one here. So because that copy paste from earlier worked, I'm just gonna get rid of the, the template because I could copy from other areas around the screen. Okay, just so now I've got this, uh, oh, I've got tiling mode on, which is looking really funny. Let me turn that off for this one. There we go. Okay, so there's my basic level. Let me go grab the um, single width tiles. I do want to find a place to put these other two, so maybe we can find one. So these single width tiles, I'm going to copy them and paste them. Oh, I got to be careful because it's pasting in the same kind of location. So I might want to make a new layer and paste, right? So I could have my template, move them around, and then there is a button for merge with a layer below. The only time that won't happen uh, properly is if you're using transparency. It doesn't keep the transparency, unfortunately. So I'll go ahead and grab this, and we'll cut, move, and paste. And then I don't really need the right hand. Or actually, maybe just leaving it cut off like that is nicer. No, I want it to go off screen. Uh, I'll go ahead and get rid of this one or move it somewhere else. I could do that or that. I'll put it there. I'll put it there. And then we'll see what I can do to fix this up. 
Uh, so I'm going to copy this one and paste and paste. There we go. So now I could just go ahead and merge down and now they're all on the same thing. And we can see there's a little error here because of what I copied and pasted. I believe I now need to grab this one instead. Copy, paste. I think I should, I should delete what's in here first because some of those rock shapes might not be the same. So we'll copy, paste. Right, and then this is like, this is not gonna work because it's not lining up properly. So this is, you, you do get all sorts of weird little shapes that you have to fill in if you want a completely well thought out platforming system that you're sometimes gonna have like a single platform extending out from the side of something that is attached to a wall and a flat ground. And like there, there are infinite kind of variations for that that you'd run into. Uh, it may be that I'm being too picky with my details, but really I, I don't think that I am. You just need an inordinate number of cases um, where it comes to filling up all of these platforms properly. For now, I'm gonna just leave those couple of ugly looking things uh, and keep working on it. What's going on here? These little black shapes. Hmm. I may, maybe I doodled something with the, the black color earlier. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, fill in all black with transparency. There we go. So now wherever that might have been, it's gone. Uh, and I think I was trying to find an excuse to put in the vertical one as well. So let me copy that. Oh, and the, I'll copy all, all of these, the floating one. So we'll copy gonna make a new layer just so I don't accidentally mess something up paste so where could I put this I guess that's not bad but it means that this guy couldn't make that jump no matter what maybe I'll float it like up here or something uh, and what what could I do make a little bit sticking down here let's see so I'm gonna copy or I'll cut this one and paste it like here just for another case that's gonna make this look really weird. Paste. I will take these two. Cut. I know what I'll do. I'll put these up here as if that's an area that you could access from um, the left, but not from here. You can just see into it. Paste that. Okay, and that means this one's gonna be double wrong now. Um, so we've got this little bit sticking off, and then this one I'll float up higher. Cut. And I'll put it like, uh, maybe just like here to indicate maybe there's something farther on. I don't know how this one lines up because it's floating in the middle of nothing. Uh, we'll just say it was like that probably. Okay, so i got a whole bunch of platforms. Who knows what the, the layout of this area is, but... That's what I'm gonna leave, and then I'll merge that down. We can see all the places where some tiles would need to be special or changed now, okay? So I'm going to start to fix those. As I do, as I change a tile, I'll probably try to copy it and then paste it back into my original so I end up making a collection of all the tiles I used. So right here we've got a sort of like a corner turn. So this ends up being like this one, but there's open air over on this one side. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm, I guess I'll leave some of these, oh, I gotta bring my pencil back down. I'll leave some of these rocks in here, but this one needs to like connect to something, right? Um, then we definitely don't need any transparency along this entire edge, because everything's connected. This rock doesn't connect properly anymore, so we need to fill in that area and now break it up and make it more unique really okay. um, how are we doing over here that one actually connects pretty nicely okay and then down here we've got the same problem where this one this rock did not continue to connect and now that I've got 
this turning a corner, I would probably need to cross some detail over between the two, which creates a necessity on this, this piece to connect to something like that detail forever after. So it's, it's a big you know, can of worms to, to do this. You go back and forth, make a few adjustments, and then you need more because you did the ones that you did, and you go on and on and on. So I'll even extend that down a little bit like that. So I've changed both of these two. Uh, and since I'm changing this one now, I, I guess I could fill that in just a little bit at the top. Um, so they're both unique now, even though they, they don't really seem all that unique. Oh, I really hate how I have like a bunch of horizontally oriented um, <laughs> stones there. Yeah, I didn't like that. I'm going to make that taller, make one here that lines up like that, and mm, better. OK, I'll do something like that. Uh, oh, also, this one probably needs to go away one right in the middle for no reason. There we go, that helps it a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll just leave that. So now both of these are no longer a part of the tiling system that I had. I'm gonna copy them back over here. I'll make a new layer and paste. So there they are. And we'll cut and paste them. Um, they don't really fit within those four. I'll just put them down here somewhere. paste and so they are like um, this one there's a wall coming from this side but not this side and one on the top over here there's a corner and a wall on this side and this side this is a wall and there's nothing below it you can see how complicated that gets but I'll just paste it down there and you might even do this like working on a real project just do your basic set, then fill in the special ones as they occur and just copy them so that you don't have to do the pixel art twice. Um, I would probably detail all of these in my tile set down here and then copy them one more time over their original set to make sure everything looked as consistent as possible. So same thing down here. This stone needs to be extended up higher like that. That needs to be cut away. All of this needs to be filled in but this part over here is going to be a stone as well, just like that. Um, yeah, actually, that worked pretty easily. And then maybe because now this is coming through, I could get away with not doing anything, and it would save me one extra tile. But I can see on both sides of this, there's stones coming up. And it's going to look pretty weird if I don't do anything at all. Or um, what I could have thought of back in this stage, oh, let me merge that. Back in this stage is that the fact that I have no floating stones at all on this bottom one, now I'm thinking about it and it's a little bit odd because there might be some bordering um, tiles with stones. So let me put in like a couple small stones here and there, just all across it. And I'll do the same thing on each one of the bordering edges, kind of like that. And so now if I copy this, and well, I just changed all three of them, didn't I? So let me copy all three. Uh, copy and new paste. I'll move this aside so that it's not cutting into anything. Put it where? Put it right there. So now that I've changed those, then maybe um, it'll be a little bit nicer looking. Mm, let's see. So these two, it won't stand out quite so much if the uh, blocks are not all unique. And I think that helped a little bit. Uh, and I could probably do it on the bottoms of these single ones as well. Um, that means that that one now can be replaced with this middle block. Right there. Uh, it helped a little bit, you know. But now we, we do still have to change this one. And this is essentially like a fill block that just has a little tiny corner extending out from one side. 
So there's there's very little interaction with like any walls at all, but there is the necessity that I put something there, right? So we do still have this becomes a unique block and that one over there becomes a unique block too. So I'm gonna copy this and in a new layer, paste it and copy this one, paste it, take both of them, put them somewhere where they're not gonna interfere with anything, like down here, and our collection grows. Right. I'm also gonna turn off just for the sake of not accidentally leaving that in later on. I'm going to just turn off the opacity of that layer entirely. It would probably be a good, good idea to save one more time. It is uh, continually, by the way, in that folder, making more and more and more Piscal files. It's going to be the most recent one is your most recent save. If you want to ke uh, keep all those back versions, then you can. Um, I think it's a little annoying that it does that, but it's OK. Uh, so there we go. Let's see, what else did I need to fix? There wasn't really anything glaring. This has just been pasted for the sake of filling in details so I can delete it. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of that. So we'll just say that this is our kind of scene, our level scene. You can see up in the um, preview up there that it uh, you know, looks like you could probably have a character run in here and maybe either jump up there or try to jump across or something. We do need a background though. Uh, and that's something I haven't really demonstrated yet. Um, your background is going to need to tile as well, but it's only going to probably tile left and right unless you have a big exploring like Metroidvania kind of level. Um, in, in this case, I'm indicating that it would kind of tile vertically, but I'm going to treat it as if it only needs to go left and right, really. Uh, so I'm going to make a new layer, but this layer should be beneath. Okay, so here's my level, here's my layer. And I'm going to try to pick some sky color or background color that's going to look nice with this stuff. Um, all of this is like dark blue and purple. You can see in the current colors palette right there. And I was going for something like misty or foresty or something. Um, I can stay within the color range if I want to and then just bring it over to the desaturated side. So I've got um, blue, purple or pink actually. Got a little bit more blue. So something like that maybe would work. I'm going to fill that in and we can see in the preview how that's working. It looks pretty dull, but it's going to need some details. Or I could go for a complementary color. So something in the yellow green spectrum, which will make this pop a lot more, but then the color harmony will probably be a little harder for me to um, establish. There you can see it. it <laughs> I always use like the, the idea it makes my eyeballs want to bleed when I have perfectly contrasting colors like that. This is like Barney colors, like purple and green right on top of each other. Um, so maybe don't go with a perfect complement. Uh, go for something towards the red side or towards the blue side. I think I'm going to go towards the blue side, something like this cyan, maybe. And you can see it's already a little bit nicer to view. Okay, so I'm going to see, I'll, I'll start there. I think that's okay. It's pretty light, but you can definitely see what solid and what isn't. So if I'm going for a forest, I'm going to want like a canopy kind of shape. I'm going to bring my um, pixel size way up on this, this pencil. And I'll probably want some undergrowth or something like that. Um, the rule of thumb I would use is probably to start with the sky color, whatever it is and then fill in the layers on top of that. And they should get more contrasted as they get closer to you. It might even be prudent for me to do this in several layers where I could mess with the colors as just complete fills and turn their opacity up and down. So let me do that. I'll make one layer on top of this one. So the sky's on the bottom, then I've got this. And I'll fill in like canopy and like lower, lower foliage or something like that. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker and more saturated and I'm going to try to bring it closer to the um, purple as well. So I'm going to just fill in big blocky area like that and on the ground maybe as well. So let's go like way up here. I'm just going to fill that in. 
So I can see in the preview how that's starting out. I'm not sure if that's what I'm going to want to keep. Definitely not the shape, right? It's going to need a lot more work. And I'm going to have to worry about tiling as well. So let me turn tile mode on for this. Should I turn the grid off? For the background, I really don't need to see the grid. So I'll turn it off for now, just so I can see that. Um, there's my level extending out, but I only want to pay attention to the left, right? So we can at least see that first bit of detail. It's not super satisfying, but let me try another layer. So this one I want even darker and more saturated and even farther towards purple. Uh, and we'll fill in what would be even closer details. Just kind of make these wiggly lines right now. There you can kind of see the, the appearance of depth kind of taking shape now. So if I wanted this to be like a forest, I'm going to grab all this upper detail, right? And we'll let me just move it. I'm going to cut and I'm going to make a much thinner line where we can see sky. So like that. Paste. And for the bottom as well, I'm going to cut, move it up and paste. So this will be like a thin little view between trees. And I want to fill in that same color top and bottom like that. There we go. It's a little bit nicer. And then here, I think I, I still want to close this in a little bit farther. This top one's OK, because this would be like near uh, foliage. But the bottom one, if we're on the ground, we're not going to get too much perspective change, really. I'm going to slide this higher like that. And paste. And then sample and fill. Oh, I must have scooted it over one. Fill that in. There we go. Now I'll fill. OK. So I know that the, the working area is a little hard to look at right now. But in the preview, you can see what's going on here. That I'm kind of creating an atmospheric uh, perspective sort of effect where the, the green is becoming more prominent the farther we go back. Um, I could help this along a little bit by turning opacity down for these layers. But now they're going to kind of overlap with each other, so that's going to be weird. Um, just to get this over and done with as an example, uh, I'll just quickly detail this out. So the sky is not going to need very much unless you want to put like a gradient on there or something. And I'm not going to do that right now because this doesn't have a good gradient tool. We've only got fill and pixel tools. But the next few layers, like this close one, the idea is that it be um, like canopy of trees. So if I be a little bit more careful in the way that I'm shaping things, don't want to add too much contrast, I could make this appear leafy. And then probably what I would want to do is pick and choose a place to have like an actual tree trunk extending down, maybe with some branches like this, and some little cutout areas. If I fill that in properly, there we go, I guess I did, got lucky. Then it's going to give it um, a, a nicer kind of appearance. But just one tree tiling over and over again would be pretty strange. And so I should probably try to fill in at least one more going in a different direction. Do this one. Go like this. Maybe I'll bring the canopy down a little bit. I can see the tiling now. So I want to make sure that they meet up somewhere like that. And I'll fill in any sort of little mess ups after I get, oh, you know what? I didn't want to fill that area. I'll, fill, I'll fix any little mess ups in here after I get the basic shapes in. Okay. I'm not even being particularly careful about uh, what shapes I'm drawing. I'm just trying to get a big blocked in shape. Uh, if my second color is transparency, then I can shave away just like that. So kind of like this. Um, so now, looking at the tiling, looks decent enough. Uh, I believe that, there we go, this eyeball will control whether or not we see the other layers clearly. And right now, I just want to concentrate on this one layer. So I'm making a few little leaf shapes, more detailed like that. And 
taking a look at the thickness of the branches that I drew, trying to get it a little bit less extreme. I think this one would probably extend out that way. So carving better shapes. Um, your background should be low detail compared to your foreground though. So don't think that you need to come here in here and do like nice shading and everything on your background. Uh, you pretty much shouldn't do that. Uh, if you did, then it would take attention away from your character and your play area. And so you should really just kind of fill in broad silhouette details with a little bit of something so that you know what you're looking at and leave it at that. Uh, with that said, I could make this two different colors, like the uh, branch or trunk colors and the canopy. They could be separate colors. As long as I keep them um, low contrast, it would be fine. But what we wouldn't do is come and give like highlights and shading to absolutely everything back here. It would be kind of nuts to do that. Um, OK, so that's fine. And then down here, this sort of just looks like earth or ground right now, which I'm fine with. I'm just going to leave that completely alone. So I could have three colors, a branch, a canopy, and an earth. But I'm just going to leave that. Um, here is the second layer. The idea here is that this would be farther away, so we should have higher frequency details. And if we have trees, they're going to be a lot smaller. So first thing I'm going to do is just scribble in a bunch of trunks for trees, like twice as many, um, a few close together, a few apart, so kind of like this. Give them a thickness that is comparable to the, to the front one by about half. You see that by about half. Um, lots of random details will help this to look organic. And I'm mouse drawing right now, by the way. I'm not even using my tablet. And so this is kind of awkward and lilting left and right. And that's just fine for these kind of organic details. If I needed more precision, I do have my tablet. I'm working on my tablet surface right now. But visually for me, it dims the screen every time I push down which I hate for recording, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not sure if it picks up on the recording for you guys, but man, is it annoying to me. Um, so I'm not going to subject myself to that, I guess. <laughs> I'm matching up the uh, canopy on the tiling there. Add a few extra branches here and there, like that. And we can worry about exactly how they're shaped as the next step. And then I find leaving some little gaps up in the top just kind of makes it look better um, as if there's uh, holes in the, the canopy that you can see the sky through. Uh, let's do, I think I should even get a smaller brush size at this point since I'm drawing uh, branches and trees like that. A few cutoffs like there. And then some higher frequency detail, as in like roughing up the canopy so that the leaf size looks like it got smaller. Not being very careful about it, but then again, I don't have to. Okay, so that'll have to continue over here. Like that. Want noticeable shape change without going nuts about it. Uh, okay, so that's starting to look pretty decent in my uh, preview here. Yeah, okay, starting to look okay. Um, the sky maybe needs some detail now. It is just a color at the moment, and that's just kind of not doing it anymore. Um, but without getting into gradients and stuff, that's what I want to avoid. I could put like clouds or something, but if the idea is that it's a forest, we wouldn't even be seeing clouds. Oh, what should I do? I'm thinking at like a gradient or something is what the answer would be. And I'd probably get it lighter towards the top because if you saw to the sky, it would be brighter up there. Um, let me try really quick. So. I'll start with my sky color that I've got for my color picker. I'm going to go lighter and less saturated. And should I even move it towards yellow? Yeah, let's move it a little bit towards yellow. 
and I'll use the line tool, the stroke tool, to draw in where I want that transition to have taken place. So here up, it's gonna be that brighter color. From here down, it's gonna be this darker color. And then probably, let me sample in um, one more darker sky color. So a little bit more saturated and dark, and a little bit more blue. And I'll go ahead and use the stroke tool as well for right here and fill that in. So now I've got a banded sky. We can't even see that happening behind the other details. So I do want to know where is the place where this is visible. Uh, if I draw a line across here, is that visible? Okay, so that's right in the middle. Cool. Let's put, um, yeah, that, that final termination for the bright color is fine, but I'm going to scoot up the dark one to like here. There we go. So it's just visible down there. And then I'm going to use dithering to try to transition this. I'll start with the standard dithering tool, but I think this is gonna call for like an extra pattern, um, which I would have to kind of look up. I'm not too familiar with um, a lot of dithering patterns, but just with this tool alone, let's do a four pixel size, why not? So, ooh, okay, so I would have to like, I have to draw a straight line with my mouse and it's really tough. <laughs> But I want to just fill in like this transition space with that. I guess I could come back in with the line tool with the solid colors to fix it. But this is like the 50% dithered pattern. It's like a perfect checkerboard of light and dark colors, um, which is pretty dense looking. Hey, it kind of looks cool in the in the thumbnail though. Looks less cool when I zoomed it in. And I guess it could have an organic quality to it, but I'm gonna to try to get a better pattern. So that's gonna be it to start with. So I'll have this nice checkerboard pattern. I'm probably gonna to need to copy paste. I'm gonna get down to my pen tool and go back to a single one and see like if I then, um, if I then started skipping every second one like this. This would create a second pattern, which I think should start to fade this properly. And I'll do the opposite down here, where I start to skip every second rank with the light color as well. I'm trying to figure this out like this, I think. So I'm attempting to make that gradient pattern extend. Let's see if that worked. So I'm going to copy this section. It's all solid pixels, so I should be able to just copy paste. Copy, paste. Oh, the pattern didn't line up. OK, hang on. So I've got to copy from here to right before that next rank would have appeared. So it's like there, I think. Copy, paste, yes. Ooh. Paste. And now I can't, okay, yeah, I can move. Paste, there we go. So now that I've got a few of them, I'll copy this whole strip. Uh, one, two. Copy move, paste, and we'll see if this helped. It's probably not enough, and the pattern needs to ex be extended a lot farther, or be more complicated, or something like that. But this is the idea that I can have um, dithering, which softens the transition between two things. Again, it looks better in the thumbnail than it does in my view. I guess that's passable. Okay, then I want to do the same thing down here. Oh, I messed up my copying and pasting a few times. Well, whatever, I, I can fix that some other time. Uh, then I want to do it down here with my other two colors. So I'm picking both my colors, getting my dithering tool. This time I'll, I'll try to be smarter and just do a small section and copy initially. So here's the transition area. I'll just drag out at some distance, get my pen tool, Fix this up. OK. 
Okay, so then do my pattern, which is skip up to here, and then do that a few times. Just filling it by hand is going to be easier than all that copy and pasting stuff. Um, and then same thing down here. And then just kind of hope that this looks okay. A lot of times the background on a real level um, won't necessarily move with the level, it'll move with the camera. And let's see. That copy properly? I think I think that's correct. Let's try that. And so you don't have to have it tiling vertically and horizontally, but in a big exploratory game like a Metroidvania game, you probably do have to have it tile both ways at least a little bit. Um, if I'm remembering correctly in Metroid, you would get like closer and closer to the atmosphere. Or as you went down, actually it was all caves, so it didn't really matter. But on the surface, there was at least some tiling, I think, with the with the background color. How am I doing this wrong over and over? There. Okay. Okay, that one's right. But it's been a while, so I don't quite remember, but I'm pretty sure they did. Okay. So we'll we'll leave it at that then. There's at least some tiling and dithering to get this sky looking a little bit nicer. And you could have silhouette shapes way back in the distance too, shadows or little highlights or something like that. We could have light shafts like coming down. Actually, okay, now that I just said that, now I really wanna do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna at least do that um, between three and four. I'm gonna have a, a light shaft or something. Um, so I'll make one more layer I'm going to turn on my preview for all layers. Uh, I have what is close to the sky color right here, but I'm going to push it even higher and yellower and more saturated because I'm going to turn down the opacity for this one. I'll use my stroke tool and ooh, should I have these going way up high? Not really, but let's I'll, I'll draw like a ray. Um, the angles that you should draw your lines at are pretty picky, but I'm not going to be. I'm just going to do sloppy ones. And I'm just going to draw a couple rays of light coming from some... I, I shouldn't even put perspective on these rays, I'm realizing, because if they were tiled, then that would be weird. The perspective would change over and over again. But, oh well. I'm going to do this. And so I'm going to fill those in. And now I'm going to turn down the opacity of that layer. I'm hoping this it actually looks good with no opacity change at all. But I'm going to turn it down to like 0.25. Uh, there we go. And if we had parallaxing scrolling, so that would be that the background layers scroll at a different rate from the uh, from each other, then this would look particularly cool as like light rays kind of scanned across the forest floor with the different layers of trees moving at different rates. That'd be pretty neat. Um, what I'm seeing now is that my foreground tiles are no longer popping out as much because I've detailed the background so much. The thing the foreground tiles lack is contrast. There's no highlight colors on um, the foreground at all. Now they kind of need them to stand out uh, against all of this fancy background stuff that I'm doing. So, here I am on the tile layer one more time. Let me save this so that I don't lose progress. Oh, it's called New Piscal. Perfect. <laughs> um, I would probably want to come back in and add some highlights here because without them, it just looks dull. So if these are stones, then I could come over to the corner of these stones and add some little um, colors. I could just use this light color, make a new layer, do some sort of, you know, kind of pattern or whatnot. Could even add in some dithering or if we wanted to. And then turn down the opacity of this layer. Let's do it by half so that we get some color mixture. And I want to see what does that look like at all. 
it's a bit dull, but we wouldn't really be able to tell until I filled up a bunch of these. Oh, I want my second color to be transparent. See if I'm going to do this. So I should probably fill in at least some of the corners of a few of these rocks in an area and then see what the effect of that is. We can do less on um, rocks that are further down, more on rocks that are higher up. Um, you can't do anything to these little tiny guys. And so hopefully we would end up with a more interesting contrasted look for our foreground elements. But again, we're working with tiles, so I would have to go in and change the um, change the tiles so that all of this can be duplicated all over the place. So we'll just do a couple, a couple more like that. So one down here. This would be down on the shadow side, so we probably wouldn't have any. I also don't have any cast shadowing on any of this, um, which we could add. So now I've got a small area of contrast. Let's see how that looks. It does help a little bit. Um, maybe I picked the wrong color to start off with, but it is giving it a little bit of extra life. So now we can kind of tell that this is supposed to pop out at us and have more precedence. Since I am working on a single layer, I could change this pretty easily using this paint all pixels of the same color tool. Uh, this yellow green was probably a bad idea. Let me push it warmer and more saturated. And now let's see. Um, probably needs to be brighter. I am turning the opacity down by half already. Let's do 75%. Oh no, 0.75. And I'll also desaturate my color just a bit more because I think it's going to be too much. I think I can just push this off to the side and leave it open, let's see. Yeah, I can. So I can bring it back on to view. So at least I could view this off on the side or I could have it kind of covering over part of the screen while I'm working. Uh, but I would want to pick some pattern or shading or detailing to make this stuff pop out a bit more and then propagate it all throughout this tile set so that I have both a nice ending composition and a useful tile set that I could copy paste um, wherever I wanted to. Okay. So we've been going for a while here, um, trying to see if there's anywhere I can see the runtime of how long I've been, oh, there we go, over an hour. So I'm, I'm gonna stop here and see if there are any questions that you guys might have. Um, really, this is all that your assignment is, is to create a tile set that looks nice um, I would like to see both the tile set and your finished product, so two separate images. Uh, but you don't have to do fancy special effects, you don't have to animate anything yet. I would like to use your background for the background of an animated character, but uh, that animated character could be on transparency as well. So if there are any questions, let me know about that. If not, then I'll probably end the stream here so that you guys can get on with your work. Take a peek in Discord as well and see. Nope, nobody's posted in there. That's good. I'm not sure how delayed chat is, but I'm not seeing anything popping up. So I think you guys all know how to contact me and can ask questions. Uh, in Discord or just you know direct message me or something like that. Uh, anyway, this is probably how demos are going to go for the foreseeable future. I'll live stream directly to YouTube because it's going to back up this um, video so that you can access it later and maybe play it at two times speed or something like that. Um, but thank you guys for joining me. And uh, I hope you guys are all staying safe at home. Uh, have a good time doing a little bit of pixel art and we will continue doing uh, more pixel art next week. All right, you guys, thank you very much, and uh, I will see you.